we go. Hey guys, welcome back to the typical skeptic channel. Um, and if you're watching on Spotify or Apple, listening on Spotify or listening on Apple podcasts or ho however you're watching this, remember to subscribe, follow, like, do all that stuff. It helps the algorithm comment. Or if you leave a YouTube comment, that's great. Um, I, even if I'm doing something bad, I like to know. So whatever, but um, I have an awesome guest with me today. Um, it, this is a, I have an amazing guest. We're going to learn about a lot of new stuff today. I have with me Todd Wilcox. He goes by the name the Slipstream Shaman. And Todd has had a lifelong fascination with alternative healing, consciousness expansion, and human potential. His first book, Slipstream Shaman, using quantum healing for individuals, communities, the planet, and beyond, was recently published. And the next two books are in series out to be soon. Todd also loves talking about the paranormal. So we'll be talking about like shadow, ask him about shadow people and ghosts as well well and uh the name of his book is called slipstream shaman using quantum healing for individuals communities the planet and beyond and his website is www.slipstreamshaman.com it's real easy to remember so go check out his book check out his website and i want to give him a big warm welcome to the show todd thank you for joining me how are you i'm doing great robert how are you i'm awesome thank you i i we're doing this um now when we talk about slip why do you go by the name slipstream shaman can you tell the audience what that means Absolutely. So I've been studying shamanism for quite a few years. And for the most part, the, I, I love the results you get when you work with a shaman. And I love what takes place when you're working in the spiritual and energy realms. But many times it just takes so long. And I, I think what happened was most of the shaman work has been developed over centuries. And we didn't have the speed put on us that we do now. You know, I can remember 30 years ago hearing that computers were going to make life so easy that we would have a, a five hour work week. And um, what they've done instead was speed things up to the point where we're working 60 hours a week and we have to get more done than we ever have before in faster time. So what I did was I took some of the, the shaman techniques, matched them with NLP, neuro linguistic programming, hypnosis, and also um, a couple other modalities for healing. And just, I've always had this thought that no matter what we have that we're working on, we can always do it faster. We can always cut out um, the unneeded steps. We can always remove the, the parts of the queue that, that are not needed. And that's where this thing comes from. And, and the slipstream is really just, you know, picture you're driving on the freeway and you get behind a semi, all of a sudden your RPMs go down, but your speed's going up because you're getting pulled in that draft from the semi, it's creating a slipstream around the truck and that's pulling you along. And that's what this does. So when you make a change with these techniques, it's gonna, it's gonna create a slipstream that propels you forward into the future to um, have a much better life in the future. And, and the wonderful thing is it also sends things backwards. And so you start reframing things from your past and making those better. And uh, the slipstream is just a beautiful thing. And it was, it really felt like the way to describe what was going on. So you bring the modern slipstream in to the ancient shaman, meld the two together and really have something unique and beautiful. That's cool. Now, would you, your, is your main focus, would you say on like healing techniques and healing modalities? Yes. Um, with, with this, it's all about the healing and uh, techniques and modalities and teaching people. Um, I, I, a few years ago, I was in a paranormal group and, and we were going to be the, the group that went out and helped the people that were having the hardest times that the other groups couldn't help. If somebody had what they thought was a possession or, a, or just a serious haunting that wouldn't go away, we, we were going to go help them. And we weren't quite sure what to do. And we, uh, you know, it's one of those things, you know, when the, when the student's ready, the teacher shows up. And about the time we were talking about doing this, a shaman wanted to teach us ways to protect ourselves and other people in the spirit realm. And as I was learning uh, what the shaman was teaching, I, I had a frustration about the way she was teaching it. Um, she was saying that here's what the energy should look like. Here's what the energy will feel like. Here's how you do this. Well, that wasn't what my energy looked like. It wasn't what my energy felt like. And and because I, I seemed to be in conflict with her, I just wasn't getting out of it what I needed. So I, I did it when I went home. And um, so originally, this whole process started out as a way to protect me and to put protection on people that were having trouble with, um, oh, nightmares, night visitations. 
things like that, that they wanted to abductions, to, abductions. Yes. They wanted to be able to protect themselves when they were asleep. We're so vulnerable when we're asleep. And so everything kind of started with that. I wanted to create some kind of an energy. We'll call it a force field uh, because I, I like that term that protects us from those kind of things so that we can relax and sleep is how this started. And then it evolved um, almost by accident into he into healing. Well, let me ask you this: Like, have you had um, have you had like uh, results like helping people with when it comes to like, you know, um, like helping abductions? Because that's a big thing. Like, it seems like people are having a problem. And I know I've heard people say like, oh, I've heard everything. I've heard people say they've called on Jesus. They've done this. They've done that. And people can't seem to stop. But it seems like when these beings, wherever they're coming from, wherever they're coming from interdimensionally or extraplanetary or whatever you want to call it, they're coming for sure. And they're abducting people for sure. And nobody, once they get control of our minds, that's it. They're paralyzed. And then they're, they're, they're taken. Like, have you found a way to fight against this? Yes. And, and there's a story in the book. So we, we, the book has processes to set these up for you, set things up for your friends, family, loved ones, those kind of things. So it, it takes you through the process of how to do it. And then I also share some things that have happened in my life. One of the stories in there is Ron, a great friend of mine, multiple up abductee. Um, he has not been, he has not had trouble with it over the last decade, but he has, he's been abducted hundreds of times. And when I worked with him, I had him in the, the room that I work in, the quantum room that we can talk about in a little bit. When I had him in that room, I noticed that there was a parasite on him uh, that was sucking energy from him. And he was having just horrendous heart trouble. Uh, he, he's down to where his heart is only pumping at 12% efficiency. Wow. Uh, he, was, he was supposed to have passed away almost three years ago. And he's actually getting stronger, even though his heart's still pumping poorly his body's actually getting stronger. We got that parasite off him and he's been able to heal and, and stay strong. Um, but well, what's that look like an energy parasite? Can you, first of all, can you see them and like, or, or I, I mean, what do they look like to you? Like, uh, okay, sorry, so I mean, this, this is a manifestation when I'm in a meditative state, um, okay. I'm just working with energy and spirit. So what, what this thing represented to me, it looked like a, um, a large tube that was connecting to Ron and then going off to where I, I didn't know where. And um, after we disconnected that tube and, and, you know, things, I don't know how things decide to manifest when I'm in that quantum room and I'm working with spirit, working with energy, they, they decide what they want to look like to me. Sometimes what they look like makes sense. Sometimes not always. Um, but this thing totally made sense because it was sucking his energy. It was, it was pulling his energy from him. And we disconnected that, burned the end, and <clears throat> I started tracking where it went to. A, my quantum room was just a mist. You're in a room with just, you're just covered in a gray mist. You can't see very far and things will come to me. Um, we'll, we'll talk about those things, you know, before the night's over, I'm sure. But um, things come to me through that mist. And as I was trying to figure out where this hose was going, something that's never happened before was the, the mist cleared and in front of me was, was the torso and head of this alien with a, with a big triangle shaped head. And we were both shocked to see each other, both I think scared of each other. And this thing sent a, a wave of energy that hit me and, and actually knocked me out. And uh, once I came to, I, I uh, called Ron, told him what had happened and, and he was absolutely stone quiet for a second and he says and he tells me about five years ago i did a regression therapy with a hypno hypnotherapist and he just lost his mind during he started screaming tried to run um he was completely out of it in, in a deep hypnosis uh, trying to get away from this alien with a big triangle head that was trying to kill him wow and I, I didn't know about this 
And, um, but he, yeah, I've got goosebumps thinking back on it. Actually. Well, no, you know, this is a big thing. Like this energy feeding is like serious shit. Like, and oh, and I mean, I mean the curse, but like, I, I get it. I get uh, emotional about this because I realized something the other day when I was at work and I'm, I think I found out what I'm going to write a book on. And I think it's these fourth dimensional entities. They can put thoughts in your head. A lot of times I, I just saw it on the Alex Jones show the other day. And I know a lot of times he gets a little wild about stuff, but he has good points on stuff and someone on his show they were talking about people with mental illness and like people who had like schizophrenic disorders and they said that once the people realized that these were outside entities doing this they they started to realize that they could control it and that that, that this was this because a lot of times i think people think that these energy sucking and uh entities like are that there's something wrong with their mind. Well, it's yeah. not that a lot of times it's a parasite like you dealt with or like it's I don't think it's as much mental illness as what, what we're dealing with. I think this is abduction, possession and, uh, and and a total violation of our rights as humanity. Like I think p- things are, are are putting thoughts in our heads to so we get in, tra- in a traumatic state. And that makes us uh, in your friend's case, it was bleeding his heart or draining his energy. And in, and in a lot of people's cases, it, it, it affects their, their whole life. You know what I mean? What, do you, what are your thoughts? I, I agree. And that was one of the things as I started doing this more and more, thinking back on stories that I heard about shaman and medicine man and, and, and voodoo and things in the past. You know, they're always talking about, well, they're a demon's doing it, uh, you know. And those are the kind of things I run into when I'm when I'm in this meditative state, working on a different plane, and and helping people. There's things that people would call alien um, demons. There's things that would be monsters. There's Can I ask you another question? That. Do you yeah. think that these are all the same entities wearing a different mask? I've heard that before. Mm-hmm. Like, do you think they're demons? They're aliens? They're they're that's because it seems like they have a they have a three ways they can they they either abduct people out of their beds at night or they send thoughts through their head or they take possession of them physically, like through an exorcism type thing. So, I mean, yeah. do you think this could be all the same entities, like with different modalities of, of uh, trying to hurt people? What do you think? Possibly they, they could be different. I, uh, I can tell you about an experience I had. I, um, I have a radio show and, and for years, even before the radio show, I would, I would joke about, I can't wait till the aliens try to abduct me. I'm going to commandeer the ship and just go explore. And I, I <laughs> joked about this forever, right? And um, I had a visit one night where I was I was staying in one of those those little L-shaped motels that are on the side of the freeway, uh, the old ones. And I'm staying in that, and the whole back wall disappears, and about seven different types of aliens come in. There were short grays, tall grays, a praying mantis looking thing, a, a blob thing, a thing that just kind of rolled around. There was multiple different aliens that came in and they made it clear in no uncertain terms that I needed to quit joking about that. Um, and I didn't even talk about it for a few years after that, but I'm, I'm talking about it now, but I am no longer joking about it. I, I need them to know I'm not joking. I just, I want to share that, that there's stuff out there that we don't understand. And um, I was sick for three days after that. I felt like there was multiple entities there. And then, then you get into entities like the hat man and, and things like that, that are, that are different. So I think there's a number of things out there. Um, I think many of them like the hat man, the, I call him the watching man because all he ever does is look when I'm there. Um, and so I, I think there are different things. There's mostly good things. But, but there are some problem things out there, like that triangle headed alien that was trying to kill my friend. Yeah, it seems like I mean, like it, it seems like whoever the bad ones are, whether they're aliens or demons or maybe like you said, it's a, a mix of different characters. I think like they, they they find something in humanity, which is like our soul and maybe with the, the fact that we have emotions, because I think they feed off our negative emotions, you know, yeah. and, and it's just it's crazy. But um, let me ask you this. Have you been able to uh, help people fight off entities, too, as well, like um, with the, with your shamanism? Yeah, with with like with Ron, we were able to eliminate that. And I go into detail and I hate how violent that the elimination was, but I had to be very violent with that one. Uh, But the main thing that that I do is um, set up protection. And many of my um, my thoughts on how to develop a process will come from science fiction that I've either seen or read. 
and I can remember being in junior high and uh, a, a traveler was on another planet and he set a bunch of cubes around him and they created this force field that protected him while he slept. And so that's what I, I, uh, I work on is creating a force field around people, helping them create a force field around themselves that keeps those things from coming in and attaching them. Um, you can even, as you take your energy and you, and you start um, being able to manipulate it and that, and you put it around you for protection, you can also expand it. And um, most of the time when you expand it, if there's something in your house that's waiting for you to go to sleep, it knocks it out of the house. If there's some bad energy there, if that's there's awesome. something um, waiting for your family to do something, even in another state, you do that and you knock it away from them. Um, there, there seems to be a very strong um, ability that we have to, to work in the energy field. I think we're kind of returning home to our spirit level when we do that or, or approaching it. And uh, we have unbelievable power when we're in this, I call it the quantum field. Uh, uh, physicists may not, but to me, that's, that's what it is. It's where energy and spirit interact. And uh, we seem to be superhuman in that. And Let that me ask you why. this. Do you think quantum is because we're living in some kind of simulated reality? Like, uh, is that why? Because it's all numbers and mathematics. It all breaks down numerology wise, like this whole world we live in even the paranormal and you know like how it's all like related and ufos and everything you know like did i make any sense or was that just a bunch of ramble you, sorry you made you made total sense and and i i am not sure there's there's many times i wonder if that's not the case there's many times where i almost feel like this whole story is just me and there's no other people in it. And I've just put them there for characters in my, in my personal movie. NPCs, so, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, that's a hard one to answer. I, there could be, um, I think more than anything, I just like the sound of quantum. So I, <laughs> I use that. But um, it's, it, it's, it's a, I think it's a real place. I think it's a real, it's an existing place, you know, like, no where, like you said, like where the spirit world and the, and the, and the alien world meet it's it's all it's all in this like and and it's also could be our, our astral field like we know because yeah. it seems like a lot of abductions happen in the astral realm right absolutely yeah and so if you can protect yourself um you're you're much you're much calmer you're able to sleep at night knowing that it's not going to come get you and and um but yes the astral field is and i i think that's that's all part of this, the astral field, the, the spiritual field, the energy field. I think they're all tied in together. And, and that's the place that I'm working. And it's, and it's on a much different plane of existence. I have to immediately write down notes when I do this. If I wait even five minutes, and, and many times I make notes as I'm going because my, my human mind can't remember what's going on there. Um, but if I write it down immediately, I can look at it and then remember, but if I don't write it down within an hour, I couldn't tell you what happened during a session. So, um, it's, it's much different it, than the existence that we live in, in this body and, and how we interact with it. Now, I, Michelle has some notes here that she provided me with. It, uh, one of them was, it says the animals that help you do the energy work, are they what we would call spirit guides? Yeah. And so. I do have spirit guides. I have four of them. Two of them are animals. Um, people that know me aren't shocked to find out that one of them is Bigfoot and the other one's an elk. Um, but, uh, the other two things, I don't know what to call them. They're, they're, they're in a different plane of existence. One I can barely see because it's kind of going in and out of phase. It's hard to tell. Um, but the, I think the animals that come and help me, and, and they mostly consist of animals I've had in the past, dogs, cats, uh, horses that my dad had, um, and a few other things that come to help uh, a rat that I had in college, um, come to help. And I'm not exactly sure if they are spirit guides, if they're the spirits of these animals, or if they're just a part of me, um, using, using the behavior of those animals as a guide for me to do the work that they help me with. Like, the, the main one that helps me is a beagle named Desi, and she can sniff out anything when we're in that quantum field to help help us find problems with people. Something very minute, very hard to find. She'll find it and take it out. Um, now, did it take you a while to meet these? Um, because like uh, I, did, what, what I was getting to is, did it take a lot of meditation to like get to these states? Yeah, so um, 
I started working with the with the energy and I would I would work my hands together and start feeling the energy between them and then I would meditate and and to be completely honest for years my meditation consisted of doing that thinking trying to clear my mind and then falling asleep um, so mm. that's that's how my meditation started as I found the the quantum room well now I'm in a place I'm wide awake, my body's relaxed and in a different state. And I'm in a, I'm in a um, field of energy and spirit. And now I'm starting to meditate. And that took me a little while. But that's, that's what I want to help people speed that process up by teaching them how to find their energy and to start developing their place that they go. Now, my quantum room is a misty room that, that's just, you know, not defined. It's gray. It's just a misty mess. Um, I work with somebody that has a beautiful, um, she walks down some stairs to this pond and it's kind of in a tropical setting. And while she's doing the work, sometimes she swims in the pond, sometimes she stands in it, sometimes she just um, looks at it. Um, other people, it's in their car. They have a favorite car and that becomes their room. Um, I've had people talk about it being a spaceship or in the woods. So everybody's room is different. So once you, once you find your energy, identify what it looks like and feels like, put it over you and start building your room. Now your meditation goes to a whole new level and you can meditate. For me, I could meditate without falling asleep. And that's been the, what other people have found. And, and you can do that fairly rapidly. In all honesty, the, the book is set up to read in two hours if you read the entire thing. Um, but if you don't want to read the entire thing, but you want to get going, you could literally within a half hour of opening the book, start looking for your energy, start building your quantum room and really get into a, a great meditative state. Cause hey, you're learning how to do this for yourself, right? In your book, you're teaching the people how to do this for themselves. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Teach them how to do it. And um, when I do these healings for people, it's, it's something that sometimes I hear about somebody that needs help and I reach out to them and ask them if they want me to help them with healing. Sometimes people contact me. Uh, people that have bought the book have, have actually contacted me about helping somebody else. Um, and I do this free of charge. I don't, I never, I never charge people to do that. I don't take donations for it, anything like that. But I, I do feel like this is something that I should be doing full time and something that can help raise our consciousness and make things better. So I want to be able to find a way to make a living at it. And that's where the book came in. And that's where some training will come in and, and some things like that. So um, while I don't charge to do healings that people ask me to do, um, we do have a, a very fairly priced book that they can use and teach themselves how to do it. Um, that, that's so, pretty cool. Yeah. Now, what is I'm retro causality? What does that mean? Oh, that's one of the favorite things I've ever heard of. I can tell you where I was driving. I was on a freeway in Utah when I heard a radio show talking about that. I had to actually pull over because it hit me so hard. So re retro causality is doing something today that affects your past. And so when I first heard about it, it was a, an experiment that was done at a hospital. They went in and they, they took the files of people that were from, um, had a, a blood disease 10 to 15 years ago. And they just took all those files of, of these people and separated them into two piles. One pile, they prayed over and set positive intention and, and sent good energy back there to the, to the people when they were going through this, this trauma. And they're just, they're just holding a file. Um, they're not yeah. reading the file or anything. They're just holding it. They're sending all this energy back in time to do it. And what they found is the, the group that they sent the energy and the love and, the, and did the prayers for had a much higher um success rate on getting rid of this blood disease than the control group that they didn't do that for and that was what got the whole retro causality thing started and so as i was saying before when you make that slipstream and you make a change it's going to go in front of you helping you be this way you know in the future and it's also going to go behind you um correcting the things that that happened in the past helping you reframe what happened, helping you change in your mind. It's, it's that story, you know, maybe um, two brothers, even two, say, twin brothers will, have, will, will be at an event and one sees it as the most traumatic thing they had ever been through and the other one sees it as a minor blip or even nothing 
in their timeline. Both went through it, both had the same thing happen, but both see it a different way. And so when you're doing this work, you're, you're fixing your future and you're also going back and reframing your past, giving you much better uh, um, energy and, and thoughts and, and power to deal with things. Now, is this like similar to what we would call remote viewing? Is it? Is it? Yeah, so remote viewing can be very similar, especially associative remote viewing. And I'll, I'll tell you a story about that as well. I, I work with a lady who does organ donations. And every once in a while when something is starting to go bad, I'll get an email from her, hey, please help us. Please use your energy with these people. And, and all, all I know about them is um, they'll, they'll say with this child, with this person, I don't know name, I don't know sex, I don't know anything about the people. I just, through, through this um, coordinator, I'm able to contact them, invite them into my room, into my quantum room, and start working on them. So I was working with this, it ended up being a, a young child who had a new, uh, I can't remember the organ, heart, liver, lungs, uh, I can't remember which one, uh, but got the new, the new organ and things were starting to go bad. So I, I went there to just make sure that we could, if there was any parasites, if there was anything blocking this, if there was any energy blocks, we would get rid of those things and just, and just send crazy love to this young person to help them get through it. As I was doing that, another person comes into the room, a, another child, and it's a very gray child, very weak child. And I knew that that child needed love and energy. So I started sending just the same amount of energy and love to that child and I could see the child getting stronger and, and color coming back and then the energy shot out of them and I could tell and feel that that energy was going to their family to help them heal this this was the donor this was the one that didn't make it and so that energy was going out and and for some reason I thought I'm going to ask the name and I asked the name and I, I won't say the actual letter that this child said, you know, to keep it, to keep them um, clear, but I'll say, I'll say they said C. Um, they kept saying C, C, C. So I'm running through every possible name that starts with a C, Charlie, you know, what, whatever. I'm going through all these names that start with a C, trying to, trying to force a name to come to me. Uh, my ego kind of took over and I wanted to say, hey, I got this name and it's this. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't get it. I just kept getting this letter over and over and over. And as I'm, I'm telling the, the person that, that set me up on this about it, she said, well, they go by CC. So I, I, had, I had picked up the name, I didn't interpret it right. And so that would be, that would fall into the associative um, remote viewing uh, as a, an associative remote viewing episode. And, and, um, and that's happened more than once. And I don't know what it is with the name Michael and Michelle, but I almost always get that wrong when I, when I ask the name, if they tell me Michelle, almost guaranteed it's going to be Michael. And if they tell me Michael, almost guaranteed it's going to be Michelle. And I don't know why I misinterpret those, but um, interpretation is, is a big part of this. And I try not to, um, I tried to let the people that I've that I've helped interpret that on their own and, and make their own decisions. That's interesting. Now, you talk about Pauli Medella. What is that? I'm not familiar with that. What can you tell? Well, us what yeah. That, and so that's a term I I coined. And so um, I'm not surprised you're not familiar with it. Um, what that is, is many healings. And so it works a couple ways. I I was meditating one day and I, and I got the feeling that the same thing is happening to multiple people. Um, so um, let's, let's just use Ron's case as an example. Multiple people are having some kind of tube hooked to them and pulling their energy. So I do a healing aimed at that. Um, so it's, it's working with many people at the same time. Um, we'll, we'll talk about companions and what those are. Um, it's a little bit different than the um, than that tube that was hooked to Ron, but um, so we're we're doing we're helping more than one person at a time or more than one animal at a time, and and it's taking place at different times. So we we're doing this recording today. If I were to do a a group polymodella today in this in this, 
Um, it would help the people that are watching it right now. It would help somebody that watches it a year from now that, that needed it. It could help somebody 10 years from now watch it um, because time has no meaning in the, in the quantum field. And so it's, it's many healings and it's just a beautiful way to help a lot of different people. And I'm going to start um, doing those each week and sending them out on Instagram and, and seeing who, who it helps. And, and I might encourage people, I'm kind of new to Instagram and I think it's a wonderful way to get information out. If anybody wants to be my friend on Instagram, I'll accept you. Um, it's slipstream shaman, you know, go to Instagram and I'm just slipstream shaman. And I would love to have some new friends from, from this adventure today. I'm I, I hear I'm trying to build up my Instagram presence as well. It's uh it's tough. Like I have a big Facebook presence, but my Instagram's like a very uh you have to post. I think you have to post like really interesting photos. You know what I mean? That's what it seems yeah. like. I just post my podcast episodes. I, you know I don't really. Um, but let me ask you this: uh, my last question on the energy healing before we get into paranormal stuff, and if you want to carry cover more stuff on the energy healing, we can. But my last question for you is: is there was there something that set you down? On this path as an energy healer is this something was there an event in your life that triggered this you know i i've tried to find that exact moment and and i i think part of it is i lose so much of my memory when i'm in the quantum field that i can't tell you the exact moment but i do know that when i first started working with the energy and 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 the healing it was, it was almost by accident. I was, I was creating a, a way to help people build a shield. And, and quite by accident, I thought, I want to help this person. And I, can't, I wish I could tell you even who it was or what the situation was, but I wanted to help somebody. And I thought, you know, it, in, in my mind, there, were, there felt like there was going to be some, some things attached. And I, and I thought, you know, if it's a demon or something, I'm going to need a warrior team. So as I'm meditating in the quantum state, um, that the first thing came to me was a, a dog, a little beagle that I had. She was ferocious. She was beautiful. She was wonderful, super friendly with people, um, would fight any dog to the death and could beat up, you know, giant dogs and, um, and rats and snakes. And she was just amazingly ferocious and had the best nose I'd ever seen. She could smell anything. And so she was the first one that came out. And then a couple of them, a couple of my dogs, uh, came out and then an uncle who had been a, a Marine in Korea in World War II and some other things came to help me. And uh, we started, I, I went in with the attention of, we're gonna, we're gonna find something on people, a parasite or whatever, or a demon, and we're, gonna, and we're gonna destroy it so that they're okay. And that's what I did the first few times. And then for some reason I came to my senses and I realized that just about everything starts with a positive intent. And so I thought, what, what am I doing to help? Well, actually something happened before that. I knew that nature abhorred a vacuum. So I had to do something. If we took something out of a person, I had to do something to, to fill them back up so that something else didn't show up. And so I had a warrior team that would, that would take things out of people. Now I needed a love team to fill them up with love. And so again, it was a couple dogs. It was a wonderful aunt. Um, that came to me, they'd all passed, but they came to me to do these teams. And what we were finding at this point was that there were, there were these things attached to people and I'll call them companions. And what they started out as was something with a positive intent. So as an example, picture a three-year-old doesn't want to get yelled at by his dad or mom or neighbor or whatever. And so they get quiet and they, and they go inside themselves and, and kind of disappear. Well, that, that behavior, that that they just did works great for a three-year-old not so well for a five way way worse for a, a 10 year old and is and really gets in your way once you're in business and, and college and, and you need to be able to talk to people and so we have these things that start with a positive intent to help us uh, usually at a very young age that stay with us and then continue to keep us in that safe state that they they would call it but it's actually holding us back. And these are companions. So we would remove these companions and we did a process called debriding. <clears throat> so we would burn them, burn the outside um, so that they were ready to heal and then fill them full of love and they would change to something else. So we might pull a, a rag out of somebody <clears throat> and debride it, fill it full of energy and it turns into a flower. 
or it turns into a bird and flies away, or it turns into something. It becomes what it was always meant to be, and we've just released it to be that. And that's what those companions are. Uh, I can tell you about a lady that we, uh, where I first, one of the first times that I started doing this was um, we were talking. Uh, she was from my radio show and we got talking and she asked me if I would do a healing on her and I did and I don't ask people what their problems are or anything I don't want to know because it it um, it it biases what I do and I like to try to force things <clears throat> so I don't want to know anything and then whatever happens I just tell them about it and I let them interpret it so um, Desi's working she's sniffing around this lady in the quantum room finds something in her back kind of digs around pulls this towel, this rag looking thing out of her back that was, that was up against her heart. And we take it out. We fill her heart area full of love <coughs> so that nothing else can go back in there. And then I debride the, the blank, the, the rag, you know, burned it a little bit, filled it full of love. It became a little boy, gave me a big smile, walked away. Um, as I'm talking to her, <clears throat> telling her about what happened she tells me that she's had heart trouble for a few years her heart was shutting down it was getting worse she was on multiple medications and CPAP within two weeks her heart had gotten stronger the doctor was super happy with the improvement in her heart within a month he cut back on her medication within a few months he removed the medication and within a year she was off the CPAP and her heart's strong and doing well ever since. Um, those that, that towel that we took out, that rag was a companion. It, it started out, and we don't know what the positive intent was, why it started with her, but we do know that it, was, it had passed its point of where it could help her and it was now hurting her. So we got that out of her, filled that full of love. She started to heal and she's doing great now. And, um, and that's, that, that's the kind of thing that we do when we're doing this. I love that. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I hope you can heal everybody that you, I mean, you know, like I think as people are having a lot of issues nowadays, paranormally and like, you know, and they need this kind of healing. They, this is so much needed in the world, you know, yeah. like I, I was wondering, so I, I think you brought up an interesting point and we kind of talked about it throughout this episode, but I think we, it's something that I want to really hammer down is the fact that sometimes, and I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to give people medical advice, but it seems like, some of these energetic ailments can have an effect on the physical, right? And then, and then, and then once you remove the energetic component that's hurting the person, it seems like their, their physical body has a transformation as well. I think that's amazing. It, it, that's exactly right. And so <clears throat> like you, I'm not a doctor and I'm not saying don't go to your doctor or stop taking medicine. What I'm saying is, Maybe there's something else going on in addition to what the doctor's treating, the symptoms that the doctor's treating. Let's see if we can help by getting rid of something that, that could be causing it at a, at a spiritual level, at an energy level, at a, at a, a psychic level, and see if that doesn't turn the tide. Um, you know, as I started doing these things, getting back to your original question about, you know, how it all started, but um, as I started doing these things, you know, you get these coincidences that start stacking up. Well, maybe the dog's liver just started working on its own. Maybe her heart just repaired itself. Maybe, maybe Ron's heart is just holding on and it's too tough. After a while, you get so many coincidences, you have to look at it and think, yeah, maybe I did have an impact. Now, not everybody's going to get cured. Not everybody's going to get what they're, what they're hoping for. But I can tell you that everybody is better off from it if for no other reason, is the observer effect. As soon as you focus on something and give it energy and and give it permission to do things, it will improve. It might not get to 100% improvement, but it, even if it's 20, your, your life is better. And my, my what I see is that it's much better than 20 and, and many times 100% better. That's awesome. That, that's amazing. Now you do a radio show and you cover a lot of the paranormal topics as well. Yes. I want to ask you about what you thought about the shadow people. Um, what's your experience with this phenomena? Okay, so... Um, 20 plus years ago, I was working overnight in a, in a gigantic hardware store, uh, stocking shelves. And as I'm working, I, I get that tingle, you know, something's, something's watching me. <clears throat> I go to look behind me, and here's this shadow man standing there, about six feet tall, uh, fairly big built, uh, in, in a very dark blue, <clears throat> excuse me, dark blue looking uh, clothes. 
a long jacket, a hat, and I couldn't really tell if it was a cowboy hat or, or what exactly that was. I knew he had a face, but I couldn't see it. Uh, and he just seemed to watch me. And, and as I would look at him, I couldn't see him for very long. He disappeared very rapidly. But every time that I would see him, and it was always at that place, he would be watching me and then just disappear. I never, I was never worried. I was never um, concerned. I was never freaked out. Um, in fact, it was, it was kind of neat, you know, something new, trying to figure out what this is. And so I, I tried to make it happen. Um, and that didn't work. But other people, I, as I was going through life, telling people this story, they were saying, oh, I've seen that guy. I've, the same thing has happened to me. And he was just watching me. Um, there are people that have had kind of violent encounters with those. And, and two of them, well, two of them are very, very good friends from the radio show. One had a very violent encounter with one, and it did have the red eyes. The other one, when he saw this thing, and this, this guy... He's an alpha male. He, he was a sheriff's deputy. He, he goes, he runs in when everybody else is running out. But he said, when I saw this thing, I knew I wasn't an alpha. This thing, the alpha. And so he, his perception of it was just some big kind of monster thing. My perception is that it's just something here watching. And um, <clears throat> with the exception of my one friend, I have never talked to anybody else. And I've talked to hundreds of people about it that had a violent or negative um response to it unfortunately that's what sells books and tv shows and so I, I think a lot of the stories might be embellished on that um i just my personal experience and and the interviews i've had don't lead me to believe that they're dangerous but they're just like a, and they're like a fourth dimensional or some kind of dimensional entity that watches us right i always yeah. say fourth dimension because it's a dimension above us and it seems like that's where a lot of these entities might be because if you were able to access it, we're, we're in the third dimension, you would think that it, something would have to be in the next dimension to kind of pop open the door to our reality, right? Yes. And, and people have talked about what could this be? It could be a time traveler. It could be that person. I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. Um, it could be a uh, person, a thing going between dimensions. I was interviewing another gentleman. And he, he has had a lot of experiences with these. And one of them, he was in his bed. It, it came to the foot of his bed and it was watching him. And then it just kind of walked through him to the back of the wall. So his, his headboard is behind him. And this thing's standing against the wall where the headboard is. And, and it said something to the effect of, you know, it just in his mind, he didn't hear it in his ears. It was in his mind. It says, I am you or something along those lines and at that when he when it said that to him now he was looking through that thing's perspective from above him he could see himself in the bed and look out through the room from that thing's perspective so i almost wonder if it isn't an aspect of us one of our um something to do with something that our soul is is doing if it's coming to visit us or if it's if it's some future development of us i'm really not sure i i think there's a lot of different possibilities that it could be yeah, it sounds it sounds like I, I I would agree with all of those. They, 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 it's all options. I would leave because it's such a tricky entity to ident entity to identify. You know. Um, and now, what about regular spirits? It, it seems like you do EVPs too. Like you, oh, you, yeah. you well, well, yeah. what? Let me ask you this: How far have you gotten with EVPs? Like, um, do you get conversations, or do you just get one sentence back, or what would you say roughly? Um, I haven't had a lot of conversations. I've had some amazing responses. Um, uh, my, my team would, I would start asking crazy questions and my team would say, oh, here goes Todd with his metaphysical BS again. But, uh, it, it got <laughs> unique answers. I asked, I asked one, you know, how do you travel? How do you get from place to place? How do you find me? <clears throat> and its response was out of time. And so I'm, I've been trying to figure that out for 10 plus years, what that meant was, but I, I think what it means is it can it can travel anywhere at once at any time at once and interact with anybody at once. And it, and it travels outside of what we understand as time. Another, <clears throat> some other EVPs, my favorite ones, for some reason, I've had at least 20 of these things tell me um, either I love you or I love Todd or we love Todd. And, and it, would, it would upset my team they, I think the reason that we had so many EVPs was because of my two partners. Um, both those ladies 
just seemed to draw things to them. And so we got a lot of EVPs, but they all seemed to like me better than them. And it was kind of a sticky point with them. Um, yeah, everybody loves Todd, but we had a lot of really nice things like that. I've been asked to dance when I was on a dance floor. Um, it was actually in Italian and uh, that was really, really cool. And then there's a, a place in Utah called Eureka. It's an old ghost town, an old mine town in the West Desert. And we were at the cemetery there and a young man, this was before I was doing energy work, a young man on our team did a lot of energy work. And he said, there are three entities here that are protecting this area. We have to be very respectful. I don't want anybody spitting or going to the bathroom out here. I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere. He says, you have to be respectful of this area. It's a, it's a holy area it's, and you need to be nice. And um, at, right after he said that, I get an EVP that says, who brought us this? And it also sounded a little odd. So in Audacity, you can reverse things. <clears throat> so I reversed it and it said, brought this message. And, and so that I haven't, I haven't reversed a lot of EVPs, but that one actually said things both directions. And if I hear a weird noise on a recording, I will typically reverse it. And oh man, more than half the time you end up with words. Well, that, um, yeah, that's interesting because there's a Dr. Dave, or I don't know if he's a doctor, but David Oates, I've had him on my show. He was, uh, he used to be a big uh, Art Bell, you know, he'd go on Art Bell and he would do the reverse speech and he just reverses regular, you know, not even spirit ones. He reverses uh, regular people's speech patterns and you'd be, you'd, it would, it, it's insane. That's kind of stuff that comes up. That is one of the most insane phenomena I've ever heard in my life was the yes. reverse speech because it somehow works. Like someone could reverse my speech now and whatever in my subconscious mind is kind of lingering there will come out, I guess, through my speech pattern. It's bizarre, but it's so interesting. Would you agree? It, it's extremely interesting and so surprising. Um, I always laughed at the, you know, in the, in the sixties and seventies, they were, they were running records backwards and saying Satan was telling us to do things. And yeah, um, but it's, it's funny how many words you do get when you play things backwards. Um, shocking how many things you get. And, and I'm, I'm curious what the, what is happening. And, and I'm guessing that somewhere, I don't know if it's our brain that understands it or if it's a higher level of ourselves, we understand what's being said forward or backward. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, well, that's all the questions I have. If you want to tell people where they can find the book, where they can find your, um, you know, uh, your podcast, all, all that stuff, you know. Sure. Yeah. So the book, you, you can either go to Amazon and just search ship Slipstream Shaman and get it there. It's available in paperback and in Kindle. You can go to my website, slipstreamshaman.com, and there's a link taking you to, to Amazon to get it. And then uh, hopefully, you know, in the future, I'll, I'll figure out a way to do it through Instagram. But yeah, please, please, if you're on Instagram, let's be friends. <clears throat> I would really like to have some friends on that. I put together a Facebook page. I guess it's working. I'm not super tech savvy, but it, it should be available there. And um, and if if you want to contact me, you, you can do it through the website. There's an email there, but it's just slipstream shaman at Gmail. Um, but there's a link at the at the website also. So. Um, and is yeah, your podcast been, on your website too? Oh, no, it, some of the old ones are, um, to get to the podcast right now, what you need to do is go to castlecountryradio.com and then go to my side of the universe, but there's going to be some more links. <clears throat> the new ones aren't on there yet, but the older ones are at my website. You can go to slipstream shaman and hear some of the older ones. That's cool. Well, thank you again for doing this and, uh, I'll send you a link when I upload it. That would be wonderful. I can't wait and I'll get it posted and, and hopefully we'll make lots of friends on this. And it's been a blast talking to you. All right. Th thank you. Have a good night. And uh, this was awesome. I, I, I think we had good, some really good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Have a good night. Bye.